Today, the latest weapons, coupled with the fighting skill of the American soldier, stand ready, on the alert all over the world, to defend this country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. One of the great advantages of Army service is the opportunity for travel to far-off lands. The American serviceman has a serious job to do overseas, but off-duty time often finds him enjoying his stay almost as if he were a tourist. On today's big picture, we will see Japan through the eyes of some servicemen who tour by, well, what is more or less of a magic carpet. Sound impossible? You'll see for yourself in just a moment as we look in on the soldier in Japan. Now hear this, now hear this. We will arrive at Yokohama at 0930 hours. We will arrive at Yokohama at 0930 hours. Debarkation priority will be in accordance with the debarkation schedule posted on all bulletin boards. Troop commanders will see that all Class A baggage is brought down to the loading hatch forward. Class B baggage will be placed in the various holes as specified in the posted debarkation schedules. All service personnel who have not attended the orientation lecture on Japan will report topside immediately for the final briefing. The fellow talking up there, that's me, a captain on this troop ship to Japan. The one the colonel pointed to at Seattle and said, Captain, you're volunteering for orientation officer. This'll be my second tour in Japan. And of course, I tell these men what I can about the Japanese people and their customs. They've seen movies. They've read the handbooks prepared by area experts. They're loaded with information about the Isle of Nippon. And the funny thing is, they're hungry for more. Just ahead of them is a new world and a new experience, unlike anything they have ever known. And like anything new and unseen, they have a raft of impressions before they even see the place. Impressions that are wild and woolly and, well, I'll show you what I mean. Take this fellow, for instance. I can always spot the type by the tense, this is it look. Worrying Willie. He remembers that in World War II, great stretches of Japan were leveled to rubble by American bombs. Willie still has the idea Japan is like this. Or maybe like this. Another carryover from the days of World War II. A hostile country where down every dark winding alley looms the mysterious menace of the Orient. A straight shooter like Worrying Willie has to keep his wits about him and his hand on his six-gun partner. Yes, that's Worrying Willie's impression of Japan, as accurate as thinking that cattle graze on Fifth Avenue in New York City. Uh-oh, the fellow next to Willie. Notice that faraway look, that kind of small smile like a cat thinking of a dish of cream. He's Paradise Pete. He has the idea Japan's an oriental paradise, where all a fellow does is lounge around in a never-never land of all play and no work. Well, this version of Japan, to quote a phrase Pete will hear a lot when he gets there, never happen. He'd be better off to approach Japan with an open mind, to get rid of phony impressions and start fresh. Then I thought of something as I addressed these men. It would be wonderful if by some magic, before setting foot on Japan, they had a chance to make a kind of grand tour. So I told the men I wanted them to lend me something, their imaginations. Sit back, I said, while up into the salt sprayed air, I call out the mysterious magic passwords, Tucson Pentagon, and presto, 
Lo and behold, before you can say three day pass, you're in a gleaming convertible at the port of debarkation, Yokohama, the gateway to sea traffic with the Western world. Here, just outside the port area, imagine yourself all set to start the trip. It may look and feel like a top-down convertible, but it's really a magic carpet carrying you through the Japan of today. You start off by driving south from Yokohama. The road is slick and smooth. The Japanese have worked hard building and repairing highways, and the good ones rank with the best in our country. The shoreline has been compared for beauty with the Riviera, or the Florida and Southern California coastlines. Yes, it could almost be the USA, if not for the proof to the contrary that strikes your eye. Those signs may be just a lot of chicken tracks to you, but to the Japanese, they mean a lot. Main Street in a small Japanese town. You're a long way from home, but are you? Hop along Kawamoto draws just as fast as Cousin Cassidy. The way Japan will affect you depends a lot on you. Driving along, you pull over to watch Japanese farmers at work. Farming is no picnic anywhere, but the Japanese have it especially rough. They can't afford to dog it for a minute. Modern farm equipment? Most often, there just isn't any. Japan is a crowded country. 87 million people are packed into an area smaller than California. And the worst of it is that four-fifths of the land is rocky and mountainous. No, Japan is not exactly a farmer's dream come true. Maybe that's one reason why the Japanese farmer is hard at work from early morning till late at night. The sight of him bending, stooping, tearing at the soil with his bare hands stays with you wherever you go in Japan. On you go further south, watching Japan on the moon. You see the Japanese genius for carrying tremendous weights on bicycles. You see the place of horsepower is often taken by manpower or woman power. Not to speak of the many times horsepower has to be given a little boost. It seems at every highway crossing, you see the school buses with smiling, happy students at every window. There is almost no illiteracy in Japan. Near the town of Kamakura stands one of the unforgettable sights of Japan, the statue of the great Buddha, cast in 1252. If you're a camera fan, you'll have a field day at Kamakura. More important, you learn something about Japan. What strikes you about the great Buddha is the poise, the steady, quiet calm of the face. The way the hands are laid in the lap, palms upward, thumbs touching. Poise and car. You'll see these qualities in the face and manner of Japanese everywhere. Actually, the practicing religion of most Japanese is Shinto, a religion based on a strong feeling of awe for nature's wonders. There are thousands of Shinto shrines in Japan. You drive on past Kamakura, the blue Pacific on your left, till you come to a different kind of oceanfront sight, the hustle and bustle of a Japanese fishing fleet. 
you see the Japanese working as hard at sea as they do on land in a desperate effort to ease Japan's food shortage. What the land cannot give, they must take from the sea. Thanks to Japan's fishing fleets, sea products are a basic part of the Japanese people's diet. You don't have to visit a fish market to be aware of this either. Just order a Japanese meal. Some sushi, for example. Boiled rice with a slice of raw fish on it. It tastes just like, well, boiled rice with a slice of raw fish on it. But Japanese food has something to offer to the American who likes something different. The style of cooking is simple. And the basic food is rice, which is eaten three times daily, just as we eat bread. Many Americans find the fish dishes a little hard to take. But skiaki, a blend of beef and vegetables, appeals to most foreigners. Especially after they get the hang of using chopsticks. Food just seems to taste better this way. When somebody doesn't get the hang, a sympathetic waitress will help out. After dinner, the owner of a small Japanese hotel will often escort his guests on a tour of his garden. The green thumb of the Japanese is well known and well deserved. They do wonders with lawn and flowers and shrubbery. Japanese treat gardening and flower arranging as an art. Before going to bed, a Japanese style bath hits the spot. It's hard to find a private bath in Japan the more, the merrier. Cleanliness is the first commandment of the Shinto religion. Maybe that's why Americans find the Japanese almost fanatically clean when the facilities are available. Yes, a hot Japanese bath leaves a fellow clean and feeling like a boiled lobster. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home or a Japanese hotel. The guests have been treated like members of the family. And now that they are leaving, everybody comes out to wish them well. A friendly wave of the hand, and then a warm sayonara goodbye. As the magic carpet, a uh, convertible, heads southwest toward mountain country. The tour of Japan continues, up and up into the highland country. In the Hakone Mountains, you leave the car for a better look at the Ten Province Pass, so-called because from this point, one can view ten Japanese provinces in a sweeping, magnificent view. And dominating the view, world-famous Mount Fuji. That afternoon on glass-like Lake Yamaguchi, you go rowing. And from the boat, another unforgettable look at the beautiful snow-top mountain. Soon afterwards, Kyoto, truly a city of old Japan. Kyoto has a charm all its own, a blend of temples and shrines, with nature at its best, as at Maruyama Park, where tourists flock all over Japan to see the famous cherry tree. It's over 400 years old. How different is the quiet old sanctuary of Kyoto from the industrial center of Osaka, just a short few miles away. It is here one sees that Japan is not only beautiful views and quaint ceremonies, Osaka, the industrial center of Japan, teaches you a lot you hadn't known before. Japanese industry is far ahead of the rest of Asia and ranks with the leading industrial powers of the world. Right now, for example, 
japan is the only non-communist country in asia that can build a diesel engine it is this giant industrial power of japan that is a prime target of aggressive international communism to see that this prize keeps clear of communist hands is the main reason american fighting men are in japan today Working with them is the military might of a new Japan. Units of the Japanese Self-Defense Force are now in training throughout the country. A combination of well-trained men and the latest military equipment makes for a first-class fighting force. Japanese air missions tie in closely with America's Far Eastern Air Force. It adds up to greater protection for Japan and greater protection for Uncle Sam. The magic convertible goes as far south as Hiroshima, scene of a momentous atom bomb explosion in the last days of World War II. Most of the city was leveled to the ground. The sense of the bomb's fantastic power is everywhere, mute but emphatic. There is another kind of evidence too, years after the mushroom cloud has faded away. Evidence in the form of a touching memorial to peace. Evidence in the form of new roads, new buildings, new schools, and a new spirit which says clearly, we shall not go the way of the past. From these ruins, we shall rebuild our nation to stand up and be counted among the countries of the free world. From Hiroshima, the magic convertible starts on the way back, north toward Tokyo. You roll past mile after mile of Japanese countryside, drinking in the vibrant, colorful atmosphere of Japan. You can see it everywhere, in the cracked diesel that highballs past you, in the new bridges that span the rivers and highways, in the newsstands and the daily papers, and in the bookshops crowded with people eager for knowledge and culture. In the modern movie theaters of the large cities. You see it too in the features and faces of the new Japan. And what of old Japan? Side by side it lingers off in the brightly colored kimonos. In the traditional arts and crafts, skills handed down for generations. On the way toward Tokyo, you stop to watch a revival of an ancient Japanese sport, Yabusami, Japanese archery on horseback. You are a spectator as two sumo wrestlers go at each other with no holds barred, almost. Once your car is held up by a group celebrating a Japanese festival. The Japanese year is full of festivals and floats full of pretty girls. If it slows you up in traffic, you don't mind a bit. The festival celebration continues on until nightfall when the Japanese often explode fireworks. It's the 4th of July and the Mardi Gras rolled into one. But quiet is usually the rule in Japan. A girl sits peacefully at her window. A scholar works at his manuscript. A woman performs a centuries old tea ceremony. It is an elaborate ritual a strict form of etiquette developed through the ages. The next day, early in the afternoon, the magic convertible approaches the climax of the trip. Now in view is the third largest city in the world, fabulous Tokyo. In the early morning, the people of Tokyo rush to their jobs, pouring out of subway stations. 
braving the hectic traffic of the streets crowded with every kind of vehicle. And move on to their offices where they work industriously until nighttime. Lunch is the only break in an office worker's long day, which ends with his return home. Here he puts away the white collar. And perhaps listens to the broadcast of a Hebea Park concert while he relaxes with his family in a comfortable kimono. The soldier in Japan sees all this and much more in Tokyo. He rides past the moats surrounding the Imperial Palace. The moats date back to the 17th century. The emperor still lives in the palace grounds, but no longer is he revered by his people as a god, nor do imperial rescripts from his palace control the destinies of the Japanese people. On a height near the imperial palace are the real rulers of Japan, the Diet, home of Japan's Senate and House of Representatives. Since the end of World War II, Members of the Diet have been elected by universal suffrage. The car leaves the Diet grounds, and a few minutes later, moves into Tokyo's most famous street, where the soldier goes shopping for souvenirs. There are all sorts of wonderful buys in Japan, not only in the large department stores, but in the stalls lining the sidewalks. Street merchants feel insulted if you don't stop and bargain a little. At night, the Ginza comes alive with fiery neon. There are shows to be seen. Japanese-style stage plays rich in exotic imagery. Every motion bears a treasury of meaning to the tradition-minded Japanese. There are also brassy Broadway-type shows with lots of kicks for those with simpler tastes. And for servicemen who yearn for a stateside atmosphere once in a while, it's always nice to talk things over at a service club. But all good things must come to an end sometime. The next day you take leave of Tokyo and head back toward Yokohama. But even in a magic convertible, you can lose the way and must call on a policeman for directions. It's not easy to understand someone in a foreign language. You've got to be patient, explain what you want very slowly and carefully. Explaining where you want to go slowly and carefully not only helps relations between Japanese and Americans, but it puts the magic convertible on the right road to Yokohama. The end of the trip is in sight, and you're a little impatient, but traffic is heavy. You're stalled. So you put a heavy hand on the horn, and the noise gets you back to reality in a hurry. The magic convertible had served its purpose. It had given these men a first-hand look at Japan. And we finished just in time, too. Now hear this. Now hear this. We are approaching the port of debarkation. All passengers will have their gear ready to go ashore. Well, that was the end of my duties as orientation officer. We came ashore, ready to join our units in Japan. I lost track of many of the men who had listened to my lecture on the magic convertible, but I don't have to guess where they are now or what they're doing. Not playing tourist from a convertible, I can assure you.
For along with the rewards for being in Japan, go the responsibilities. Responsibilities paid off in work and sweat and 24-hour concentration on the job. It means maintaining a first-class fighting condition, ready for any emergency. In Japan, the American soldier puts everything he has into his job. He knows by doing all he can to make Japan strong and safe and free, he is really helping to keep America strong and safe and free. Today's soldier in Japan, and in many other foreign lands, is making full use of the priceless opportunity to obtain first-hand knowledge of another country's way of life. Knowledge that helps him become a better, more understanding, more mature American citizen. Now, this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, inviting you to be with us again next week for another look at your Army in action on The Big Picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station. You too can be an important part of the Big Picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.